welcome to my channel. My name is Kika and today I want to do this video with some quick and easy photo tips to just take better photos because I know how overwhelming it can be out there when you're starting with photography or maybe you've done it for a while already uh, so I've just gathered the tips that I think have helped me the most uh, in just one place so you don't have to go through endless YouTube tutorials. The first tip is to be aware of the direction of light. Uh, so no matter where you're shooting, indoors or outdoors, and I'd recommend shooting in natural light, um, be aware of the direction of light. And a really good tip is to just put out your hand and then you'll see what direction the light hits your hand from. So basically where it's more light and when there are, where there are shadows. Um, so for example, if you're taking a self-portrait or shooting somebody, uh, make sure that their face is not completely dark and <laughs> basically in the shadows or if that's an artistic choice then obviously go ahead uh, but just being aware of that and then how you're gonna place your subjects or your objects or uh, things and <laughs> whatever that you're shooting and a really good rule of thumb that I try to memor memorize remember or use um, is to have your subject so that they are sideways to the light. That just creates some interesting dynamic and that way you'll make blah 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 blah. <laughs> that way you'll make sure that your subject is not in the dark. The second tip is to be careful not to overexpose. I did this for a long time in the beginning um, when shooting both with my camera and also with the phone, it tends to overexpose. So you can do on the phone manually, um, if you tap the screen for a long time, then you just drag it down. So then it will underexpose it a little bit instead of overexposing, which means that you'll lose a lot of details and it looks a little washed out and very white. Uh, and instead you want to have all those details in there and then later you can edit those back in if you're going for the very wash washed out look you can do that later but then at least you'll have some options next up creating depth in your photo so if you want to get that blurry background make sure that you have whatever subject or thing that you're shooting is going to be the main focus far away from the background so i see this a lot on instagram people taking self portraits and then they're all the way up against the wall if you're taking it indoors and that will just make it look a little flat now again if that is the look that you're going for then obviously go right ahead uh, but usually uh, to get that kind of blurry background and it look a little bit more pro uh, i'd recommend that you just step out just a few meters from whatever background you have or even better if you're in a big space to be really far away and if you have a lens then going to 35 or 50 millimeters uh, or even 70 millimeters to get like a really really blurry background that looks just like mm, very very nice and juicy and very pro Another tip to add background is to think about it as foreground, middle ground and background. So basically when you're composing your shot, thinking about things that you can have that are closer to the camera, then usually your main thing so is going to be in the middle ground and then you'll have the background. Uh, so basically you're putting things uh, closest to the camera, something that is kind of middle away from the camera and something that is far away from the camera to just add that dynamic and range in the frame itself. Next up is rule of thirds. You probably heard this already, but I'm gonna put it in here anyways because composition is so key. Uh, so rule of thirds basically means that when you divide the frame in two horizontal lines and two vertical lines, no, two vertical lines, two horizontal lines, <laughs> to have your key elements in those points where they cross or uh, then straight in the middle if that's what you're going for. Um, that usually will just feel quite balanced and have this harmony in the photo for some reason when something is not um for example if you're going for a centered thing and if it's not completely center it will just feel quite uneasy and obviously rules are always meant to be broken but be really mindful about this i've just found it very very helpful when i'm taking my photos to have that as a guideline so i always kind of know what i'm sort of striving for and then i can really divert from that if i want to do that but then at least it's a conscious choice try different angles. This is probably one of the biggest game changer. Um, when a photo looks a little flatter, you just think it doesn't have that like mm, uh, storytelling vibe or like really uh, intense mood. It's usually about the angle. So I read one photographer had said that they recommend to never shoot from eyes height. So basically kind of the normal height, but always try to put your camera instead kind of low or really high up above to find surprising angles and I think this really works and lately I've been doing a lot of photos that are either taken from really low or really high up. Uh, and this is of course again an artistic choice but it does add like a very different type of mood and it just 
I think elevated a little bit more away from that very ordinary mundane so if you're looking for photos that are a bit more striking or has a little bit of dramatic effect uh, playing around with those kind of angles can really help you achieve that tip number six is to have one or two key elements or one or two key ideas in your photo so it's easy to get over excited <laughs> and just add all kinds of things or take a photo where maybe you're not really being super aware of what the background is and there's some trash cans just be very 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 mindful to have one or two key things that you really want to draw the viewers attention to and make sure that there aren't things that are distracting from the main thing um, just because you didn't maybe notice it and usually one or two key things um, it's really I would say the maximum of what I've also heard other photographers say because otherwise it will just quickly get cluttered and you will just move past it and it won't really grab anybody's attention the next tip is to look for leading lines so these are all kinds of lines that you'll find naturally so for example a road that narrows down or uh, a spiral staircase just kind of lines that you'll find and that you can use then to guide the viewers attention to the thing that you want them to be looking at tip number eight is subframing or finding frames in a frame so this is again a little bit a trick to guide your viewers eye um, so you can find these kind of frames so for example a door frame and having your subject pose in front of that or if you have some light and shadow uh, that creates some boxes and just kind of frames within the frame that's a really powerful tool and again very fun thing to be looking for naturally or even how a forest uh, draws some lines or patterns all these things uh, just being mindful and when you know these things that you can also look for them when you're out with your camera Tip number nine is to try to look at your photo as a map or the shapes that it's creating. Um, so this is a little bit about being aware of also having negative space and just if you just look at a glance at your photo, what kind of shapes it is drawing out. Um, so sometimes it can be easy to just like look at the details and something little, uh, but try to also take a step back and just look at the overall shape and what kind of um, movement it has and what kind of flow it has the balance and harmony and all that which is very intuitive but you'll get better at it once you just are conscious about it and think about it already when you're setting up for your shot or um, going out with your camera and looking for those kind of shapes I have one really concrete example of this uh, I've taken quite a lot of photos where the horizon is in the background and then I've had myself as the subject in the foreground um, and here I've often tried to not align my own kind of face and head <laughs> so that the horizon kind of chops off my head if you know what I mean <laughs> so those kind of little details and that's all about seeing kind of the shape of the overall thing um, also not make making sure to not like stack things on top of each other so if there's a tree behind that you don't stand exactly in front of the tree but try to like maybe move a little away from that um, and that will just help when you have this kind of overall looking at the whole thing so you don't get too caught up in the details and one last tip is to just shoot a bunch of photos be mindful and slow down but shoot a little bit more than you think you'll need because sometimes it's also very surprising the kind of in-between shots that end up being your favorite so you know just go at it not mindlessly obviously uh, it's so easy I think with the especially with the phone like you just kind of snap 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 um, so not like that do have an idea in mind but take a few extra uh, if you just can as with any craft I think it is about having lots of knowledge and tools that you can use which will allow you to see better and that will just also allow you to have a bigger range of what you can do so um, obviously you have to go out there and do the actual thing so take a lot of photos but if you never maybe stop and think and analyze about it I don't think you can really develop so I hope these tips helped you maybe with that and maybe you'll see things a little bit differently next time you'll take a photo I'm still learning I guess we're all still learning um, and that is part of the joy um, if you'd like to see more of my stuff you can come and say hi I'm over at Kutubakika on Instagram I hope you're staying safe and hopefully you'll have also nice summer weather I'm gonna go out now uh, enjoy some of the sun and uh, I will see you here soon again bye these are my cheese and I'll be the biscuit the lock you gave me last night how I kissed it I hope you don't mind but I thought that I'd risk it a bee in my bonnet hello there's a bee in my bonnet hello hello a bee in my bonnet hello there's a bee in my bonnet hello hello a bee in my bonnet hello there's a bee in my bonnet hello hello a bee in my bonnet hello there's a bee in my bonnet hello hello a bee in my bonnet hello, hello.